uh, in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay. Tonight we're talking about stewardship, stewarding the voice, the voice of God. And uh, you might think, well, what does that relate to? Well, it relates to your spiritual growth and maturity. For one thing, as you grow and mature, uh, you're hearing more of his voice. And as you're hearing more of, your, of his voice, uh, you grow spiritually and you mature. Now you might think, well, I'm facing some different problems. I'm facing some problems uh, with relationships or uh, sickness in my body or finances. Well, it's, there's one thing you need, and that is to hear the voice. Uh, you might think, well, it's, I need money. Well, hearing the mm -hmm. voice yeah. is your solution because the Lord gives you a promise for every, uh, for every problem. He gives you strategies and, uh, he's not going to rain uh, money out of heaven. I, I hoped he would, but I just haven't seen it yet. Uh, but he does speak and he speaks in multitudes of ways. And uh, we're uh, just talking in general about the voice and what happens uh, when we hear the voice. So tonight it's about how to steward that voice because as we steward it, then we're going to be able to hear the voice more clearly and uh, follow what the Lord is saying uh, to us. Uh, the first thing I want to say is we live by the voice. Mm -hmm. See, in the Garden of Eden, uh, when God put Adam and Eve in the uh, garden, uh, they were listening to two different voices. And one was an invisible voice. But uh, Genesis 3 uh, verse 8 says that uh, the, they heard the voice of the Lord walking, walking in, in, the the cool, garden. in the cool of the evening in the garden. So that was the voice. They heard the voice. They walked with the voice. But there was another voice. And the, this was the voice of, of the devil. And he took on a form the form of, uh, say, of a serpent. And they, as many carnal people do, they tend to gravitate towards the form. And uh, they want that structure. They want things that they can touch with their hands and, and see with their eyes and hear with their ears. They, they want all of the trappings uh, that relate to that structure. Uh, and so it led them uh, in a path of destruction and death uh, because they listened uh, to that, that voice, the voice of the serpent. Now, Jesus made this incredible uh, statement uh, that and it was a, he was standing before Pilate and Pilate was asking him, are, are you a king? And I'm talking about uh, John um, uh, tw uh, 17 verse, let's see, uh, John 17 verse 38. Okay, 1738. That's what no, it's 1837. Oh, 1837. I've got my digits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. John 1837. Uh, and Jesus said, Everyone who seeks the truth. So he's talking about people who love the truth, seek the truth. And uh, he said, they're going to hear my voice. So there is a prerequisite. There is a prerequisite. Uh, there's a requirement. Uh, in order for you to hear the voice, you have to seek the truth and love the truth. Uh, now, Adam and Eve, uh, they were listening to other voices. There are lots of voices out there. There mm. are lots of voices, and many of them are significant. Uh, it says there are none that are insignificant. And so we need to be able to discern uh, between the voices. Now, Jesus made this incredible statement in Matthew 4, verse 4, and he's uh, in the wilderness and being tempted uh, by the devil again. Of course, that's what the devil did, uh, tempted him, and it tempts us. And uh, to turn the bread... Uh, I turned the stones into bread. But he said uh, these incredible words that bread is not going to satisfy us. 
natural things are not going to satisfy um, you. Um, Do you know what's going to satisfy you? It's hearing the voice, voice of, of God. God. So I want uh, Sherry to read this out of two translations, the New King James Version and then the Passion. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds, that, that's the voice. You live, see, we live by the voice. We live by every word of, that proceeds out of his mouth. What is that? That's his voice. Amen. We live by his voice. Now read it. That, yeah, that's the verse that we're probably most familiar with, most the translation. But now let's read out the Passion, passion Translation. This is Matthew 4, 4. He answered, the scriptures say, bread alone will not satisfy but true life is found in every word that constantly constantly um, goes forth from God's mouth. Okay, so it's his voice that is constantly uh, coming from from his mouth, his mm. voice. And we want to think, well, I, I learned a verse 10 years ago, and I, I still know that verse. And, but this is saying there's something, his voice. This, this mm -hmm. is not just about mm -hmm. something you learned 10 years ago. This is about his voice that is constantly coming forth. And that's what we need to be listening to. We need to be listening to his voice. And we live by the voice. So if you think about uh, Ephesians uh, 2 verse 1, it said, We were all dead mm -hmm. in our trespasses and our sins. sins. We were all dead. Mm -hmm. But... At some point in time, we heard the voice. Woo, hallelujah. We heard the voice. John 5, verse 25. Sherry, sure, read that. Mm. John 5, 25. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Okay, so we were Woo, all hallelujah. dead. All dead. And so... You might think, well, he's talking about people in the grave. No, he's talking about people walking around because uh, the people in the talking grave. talking about the walking dead is what he's talking about. Where, where John uh, 5, 28 says that the, those in the grave will hear. That's a different yes. That's a different situation. They were going to hear the voice too, but that's at a different time. But this is something going on all the time, constantly going on in mm. word, and it has brought us alive. It's the Ooh, voice. Hallelujah. Hearing the voice hallelujah. that has brought us alive. And so we are alive, of course, by grace, uh, through faith, by grace, through faith. And mm. we know that from uh, Ephesians. Okay, so I want to talk about a couple of people uh, who, uh, as examples of the voice, and the first one I want to talk about is John the Baptist, because it says in, uh, 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 let's see, Matthew 3, and then also in John 1. So in Matthew 3, John the Baptist was called the voice, and I'm going to call him the voice of the voice. Mm -hmm, the he, voice of the voice. Ma John the Baptist was the voice. Mm. Oh, he didn't say, oh, I'm apostle so-and-so or I'm evangelist so-and-so. He, no, he said, I'm the voice. The voice. Okay, so it, he was described as the voice. And so he's the voice of what? He's mm. the voice of the voice that we're studying tonight. Oh, and hallelujah. So let's just, hallelujah. And we'll skip on over to John 1 because here is John the Baptist tells about who he is. So he's describing himself now in John 1. Verse 23. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Okay. So how do you describe yourself? Do you describe yourself as, oh, I'm, uh, I've got this big title and I'm mm -hmm. in this and I've I've got all this experience. What is your, what is, how do you describe yourself? Do you describe yourself as the voice? The voice of the voice. Mm -hmm. See, John the Baptist, and it, 
And Jesus said something incredible about him. He said, there's none greater than John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. so you've mm -hmm. had all these other uh, prophets, but there's none greater than John the Baptist. And he just described himself as the voice. He's talking about he mm -hmm. was. The voice of the voice. The voice of the voice. And, and you might say, well, uh, this is kind of a strange message. But mm -hmm. what it is, it causes us to look differently at some common things, some things we're all familiar with. Mm. Uh, but for example, this uh, series is not Walking with God. I haven't entitled it Walking with God, uh, but Walking with the Voice, because this is something you can get hold of. This is something you can put... Uh, put your teeth into uh, because it's solid food. It's strong meat uh, mm -hmm. for those who are mature. Uh, we're walking with God. We're, we're so familiar with that. And But this is, there's some practical things. We're going to get down to some very uh, practical things here. And so uh, John the Baptist, see, he called himself the voice. How do you consider yourself? How do you describe yourself? And then I want to look at Jesus because Jesus, uh, when John baptized him in the Jordan River, when he came up, uh, then we see that there was a voice. Mm -hmm. Now, there was no description of saying, oh, I am God of the universe. I am the creator. No, no. It was just a voice. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, just a voice that came mm -hmm. uh, there when he was baptized, when he came up out of the water. Now, I want you to think about uh, this concept for a moment. My name is Mr. White. I have two sons and two mature sons. And so I, one of them is, the first name is Jason and the other one is Travis. But if one of my sons was here, I could say, I'm Mr. White and this is Mr. White. This is my older son. Or I could say, this is Mr. White, my younger son. Okay, but now all of a sudden, all we know about the one that is speaking is the voice, mm, mm. the voice. And the voice is saying, this is my son. Oh, this I, is my beloved son. My beloved son. I'm the voice, and he's the beloved voice. Woo, hallelujah. I'm the voice, and he's the he's voice. He's the voice. Oh, oh, oh. There, there weren't a lot of adjectives describing the voice. It was just the voice. Okay, read these two mm -hmm. uh, passages here. Okay. In Luke 3, 21 and 22, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, you are my beloved son in you. I am well pleased. Okay, so we know the Father is the voice. We know the Son is the voice. He's the Son mm -hmm. of the voice. And we also know the Holy Spirit. He's the oh, voice in action. Oh, he's the voice in action. Hallelujah. They're all. Oh, hallelujah. They're all the hallelujah. Voice. The voice, the Father, the mm -hmm. voice, the Son, mm -hmm. the voice, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's read it uh, out of this other um isn't there another passage there in uh, Matthew 17 where uh -huh. he, it's out of the cloud? Now, again, mm -hmm. it's just a voice. Mm -hmm. It's a voice that says, this is my beloved son, and we're supposed to do something about it. Okay, go ahead. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led, led them into a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured or transformed before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white, as the light. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly there was a voice that came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Okay. Here's the Father, he's the voice, the Son's the voice, hear the Son, hear mm, his mm, voice, hear mm. what he has. To say, Hallelujah! Oh, glory to God! Lord, let us hear. Let it, us hear. This changes my perspective on things. They're approaching it like this: that we're walking with the voice, we're stewarding the the voice, and that's what on talk. The next point is how do we steward uh, the point, uh, the 
the voice. How do we steward the voice? Well, it's like the concepts, of course, that that Jesus taught us, uh, that he taught us in Luke 16 and Luke 19. In Luke 16, it talks about if we're faithful in little things, we'll be faithful in more. And if we're faithful or we're unfaithful in little things, we'll be unfaithful in other mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. And if we're faithful in uh, things that are somebody else's, uh, then we'll have our own things. We'll be faithful oh, in our own things. Hallelujah. And uh, so it all works together. So I want us to read, Sherry, to read uh, Luke 16. 10 through 12. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous manna, who will commit to you the trust of the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you that which is your own? Okay, so this is Jesus' teaching about stewardship but now we're applying it to the voice what does that say we need to be faithful oh to hear the voice to hear the voice and to obey oh the voice. hallelujah and, and the voice is going to come the voice of god comes in a lot of different ways it can come in your dreams it can come mm -hmm. in your visions mm -hmm. and uh, i heard a young man say uh, recently that he had had a lot of dreams over time, but then they stopped. Now, why do you think they would stop? Well, because he didn't steward. He didn't steward oh, wow. his dreams. Wow, wow, wow. And and I know from personal experience, mm. when, when I've got a piece of paper there by my bed uh, and a pen, and I when I have a dream, just for a moment, I can sit there and write it down. Uh, and sometimes, uh, if I want to write a lot, I'll get up and go into another room where I have more light and uh, that I'll write it down. So that's stewarding. That, that's at least the first step in stewarding mm -hmm. because the dreams, they come uh, and they're kind of like a vapor and, and they go easily. And so if we don't steward them, uh, they come and they go. And, and if we're not faithful in what he gives us, well, then why would he give us more? Mm -hmm. We need to be faithful. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's uh, the dreams. We need to be faithful with the dreams. We need to be faithful with the visions. We need to be writing things down. Mm -hmm. Also with the prophetic words that God has given you through other people. You need to be writing those down, writing them down. And going back and meditating on, meditating mm -hmm. on those dreams, meditating we on those visions. We, we've been writing them down. I have uh, uh, the prophetic words that the Lord has given us since 1992. And, and I started out putting them in uh, uh, notebooks, but uh, I, I couldn't keep up with them. And, and so <laughs> I, I typed them up and, and I put them on my computer. Now I can search. For example, if he wanted me uh, to search, about, if he wanted or if I wanted to consider a particular topic, see, I could just search through that topic. What has he said to me about that topic over mm -hmm. time? And, and there are many times that uh, he said many things related to uh, a specific topic. And, and so that's a way that I steward uh, what I hear, the prophetic words, what he has spoken to me directly, what he has spoken through somebody. So he's spoken indirectly. He's spoken through somebody has given mm -hmm. me a prophetic word. I have all of those things. I uh, tried to write them all down over the years. Uh, and that's a long, a long period of time. Yeah, I've tried is. to keep up with them. It's a form of stewardship. And, and again, just in the notebooks, I found it very unwieldy and I couldn't uh, keep up with things. I couldn't go back and review them. And, and so what he's, what he's wanting us to do is to reflect on these. We're talking about stewardship stewardship of the voice and when you are faithful with the little things he's going to give you more when mm -hmm. when he when you're faithful uh let's say he gives you a dream and in that dream it's it's from god and it has direction and 
Okay. So if you're faithful in that, then uh, he's going to give you more. But if you're not faithful, if you just, whoop, just don't think about it. You never reflect on it. You never uh, consider it anymore. Or somebody gives you a prophetic word. Oh, this is what a lot of people do. Uh, they receive a prophetic word and they say, oh, that's, that's good. And they just put it aside and they say, oh, if it comes to pass, it comes to pass. And it was of God. Mm -hmm. And the prophet who gave it to me was a true, a prophet. true prophet. But if it doesn't come to pass, well, it's a, uh, uh, that person must be a false prophet. Uh, and so I'll just sit here. That's not stewarding. <laughs> That's not stewarding the voice. Mm -hmm. To steward the voice, we need to be meditating on it. A lot of times we don't know what it means. We fully don't know because God can just say a word or two, just a simple uh, thought. And it ha it's like an onion. It's layer upon layer upon layer of those mm, things. Hallelujah. And you don't get them all at once. It's, mm. it's, there are things that he has spoken to me uh, through time that that's only by meditating and, and acting on and what I know and then continuing to act on. And, and it might be over years that things continue to be revealed like, like an onion, layer after layer after layer. But if you don't steward it, if you don't take care of it, if you don't nurture it, if you don't meditate on it, th then it's just going to go away. And, and you might think, well, I, I don't hear. I don't hear from the Lord. There's a lot of people that think they don't hear, but you know, Jesus said, <laughs> put a prerequisite or requirement. He said, if you love the truth, mm -hmm. if you seek the truth, you will hear, hear. my voice. Ooh, and if, uh, he also t said in uh, uh, John 10, 27, that if you or my sheep, my sheep will hear my, my voice, voice. And, and they do something about it. They follow me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So there's a, there's something before uh, hearing and there's something after. And before we've got to seek and love the truth. And afterward, we have to steward it. Yes, we have to okay. act on it. We have to obey it. We have to follow him. So here in the middle of it is hearing his voice. And with those two uh, statements, both the one in uh, John uh, 18, 37, when he's talking to Pilate, and he says, those who love the truth, who seek the truth, they will hear my voice. And then uh, over in John 10, he says, my sheep will hear my, my voice, voice and they will follow. They will do something about it. They're going to hear my voice and they're going to do something about it. See, if, you hear, if you're beginning to hear his voice and you begin to steward it, you begin to take care of it, you nurture it, you care for it, uh, you follow it, you follow and maybe you begin to get other people involved. Well, I've heard this word. What, what does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, uh, help me. Uh, then that's stewarding it and acting on what you know as it's revealed uh, to you. Uh, this is a, a different way of looking at this concept, but it's important. It's an important way because we all hear the Lord. Yes. We hear in different ways, but are we stewarding it? I know you hear, but how much are you uh, stewarding it? Okay, mm, so good, good. there are some effects. There are some effects of uh, stewarding, um, of stewarding the voice. There's some effects. There's there's gonna you're not gonna stay where you are. You're you're gonna you're going to change. You're going to grow. You're going to mature. You're going to become more sensitive to the voice oh glory hallelujah. to god hallelujah. There, there are things mm -hmm. that are going to happen when you begin to steward the voice and sherry do we have some verses on that mm -hmm. let's see around uh, about spiritually restoring okay in galatians 6 1 brethren if a man is overtaken in any trespass you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Okay, what I want you to see here is this is one of the most incredible verses to me. You who are spiritual are going to do things. 
you're going to restore things that have been broken, uh, that have been damaged, that have mm -hmm. lost. You're, you're, mm -hmm. You are spiritual. And so now let's go back to who are the people who are spiritual? Because this is an issue that I have, I have uh, uh, followed after for a long time. Who is it that is spiritual? Well, uh, Hebrews uh, 4.12 okay. uh, says, it talks about the word. But what I want you to know, there are three important words that uh, relate to, uh, th three Greek words that relate to this message. And uh, one of them is logos. Uh, and that is normally just translated as the word, but it, uh, it's what it really is. When I looked at the Strong's uh, concordance on it, what is the definition of logos? It is the, mm, uh, mm, mm. the word uttered by the voice. Mm. It's the word mm -hmm. uttered by the voice. And this is the only thing that will, uh, separate between carnal and spiritual. Mm, wow. Wow. You've got to hear the word mm -hmm. uttered by the living voice. Oh, hallelujah. You've got to hear the word uttered by the living voice. Mm. You've got to be hearing the voice. When you hear the voice, it will take you from a carnal mindset uh, to a spiritual mindset. Uh, you know, Romans 8, 6 says to be carnally minded is, is death, death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what's going to separate people? Well, here it is in Hebrews 4.12. 4, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay, so it's hearing the voice, the word of the living voice. So hearing the voice is going to separate us. So no longer are we a carnal person when we begin to hear the voice, mm, the voice, mm, mm. the living voice, when we begin to hear that. Now here is another, uh, just a confirmation that this word uh, is really, uh, can be translated as the voice. And this is John 1, uh, verse 1, uh, in the voice translation. Let's read mm -hmm. this verse. Before time itself was measured, the voice was speaking, and the voice was and is God. Okay. So this word is logos. Uh and just like it was over there in Hebrews 4.12. But here it can be translated as the voice because the definition of it, the very first definition of it is, it is speech. It is the word uttered by the living voice and it has a thoughts in it and it brings forth these thoughts and these concepts. So mm -hmm. it's the voice mm -hmm. and it can be translated as the voice. And what's we saw in Hebrews 4.12 that what's going to, to uh, separate uh, carnal people from spiritual people, carnally minded from spiritually minded, is hearing the voice. Oh, now, hallelujah, when, hallelujah. When you hear the voice, that makes you a spiritual person. Now, we know that you also have to have your mind renewed, and that we see that in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, and we know that uh, comes from the Word, but really, it comes from the voice. Hearing the voice, that's going to renew our mind. mind. It's going to change us from being carnally minded uh, to spiritually, spiritually minded. minded. So what I want you to see, and this is a, a practical way, and I think this will help us grow spiritually, if we can see ourselves as the voice of the voice, that we have living within us the voice. Uh, and I'm really talking about the voice of God, and it comes in a lot of different form. And the voice on the earth uh, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God on the earth. And so most of the time, we hear the voice. And we'll get into uh, uh, later, we'll get into the distinctions between uh, the voice. But for right now, let's just think of it as being uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's the one on the earth. He's speaking to us. 
most of the time. But there are times, of course, when uh, the father or the son uh, may be speaking to us. Now, I'm talking about the effects of stewardship uh, in this section right now. I'm talking about the effects of it. And I love uh, John 15, 7. This mm-hmm. will just give you, not only will it make you spiritual, that, that's the first thing I wanted to emphasize. It will make you spiritual if you're hearing the voice and if you're carrying the voice. Let's see what John 15, mm-hmm. 7 says. If you abide in me, and my voice abides in you, anything you ask will come to pass for you. Anything you ask is going to come to pass for you. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, hallelujah. Let me read it again. Okay, if it's the voice, Mm -hmm. you're hearing the voice. Mm -hmm. If you abide in me and my voice abides in you, anything you ask, will come to pass for you. Okay. So I said there are three different uh, terms that I want to just mention briefly. And one was the logos and the definition of that. Of course, a lot of people just look at it and say, well, that's the written word. But really the definition is the word uttered Uttered by by the the living living voice. And then there's another one. It's called rhema, rhema. And you think, well, that's the living voice, the living word, living word. But it, the first definition of it is what? The word uttered by a living voice. <laughs> so Hallelujah. The very first. And so we think, well, okay, uh, logos, that's the written word. And rhema, that's the living word. But, but really, there, it's the voice. It's about what the voice has said, what the voice is saying and if you're carrying that voice Mm. and and then also there's another word uh it's pronounced phone but you know it's spelled phone so (laughs) so jesus is saying i stand at the door and knock hallelujah you hear my phone ring (laughs) coming in if you hear my voice my voice if you hear my voice And, and so we were dead we were dead in our trespasses and sin until we he heard, heard his voice. voice and it was the voice that brought us alive and, and we are to be carrying the voice and that causes us to be unlimited see if we're uh, carrying let's say the knowledge of dead men's books uh, then we're limited but if we're carrying the unlimited voice mm-hmm. then that makes us unlimited and uh, things that seem to be impossible to those people who are carrying dead men's thoughts and dead men's uh, books and uh, those kinds of things. They're limited, but people who are carrying the unlimited voice within them, the voice of the almighty God within them, they are unlimited. Amen. Amen. It was the voice that Lazarus heard in the grave and when he heard the voice speaking his name he came forth hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. well let me tell you something else on june the 5th in cuba when brother fred left this place it was the voice of god that was speaking to him freddie come back freddie come back And he opened his eyes and he came back. Let me tell you something. The voice is powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the voice Mm. of the voice. Hallelujah. So so don't think that you are insignificant. Yes. You are the voice of the The voice. voice. And you don't have to uh, listen to the uh, form of a voice, a voice that takes a form like, uh, the devil took a form of a serpent in the in the garden. Now I'm bringing this to a conclusion, and I want to give you just seven practical ways, seven practical ways that you can put into effect stewarding. Amen. Stewarding the voice. Th- these are just practical things. I'm not going to go through a lot of uh, scriptures. I'm just going to. Go over these points. And if you'd like to take a pen and paper, 
you can. These are just some, uh, you can do other things, but these are seven, I believe, important things. And the first is to deepen your intimacy with the Lord mm -hmm. through prayer and worship. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deepen, deepen your relationship, your intimacy. intimacy intimate relationship through mm -hmm. prayer and worship now second engage with the scriptures hallelujah do it on an individual basis do it in a group bible study or wherever you need mm -hmm. to engage with the scriptures third cultivate spiritual discernment Mm, mm, cultivate mm. spiritual discernment how can you do that well you can ask god for increased discernment amen for spiritual discernment and when he speaks to you when he speaks to you in dreams or visions through prophetic words or he speaks directly to you through your spirit or you have uh unctions of the holy spirit within you always test those this is a way mm -hmm. that you can increase your spiritual discernment cultivate spiritual discernment test what is being said is this of god is it not of god if it's of god does it go along with biblical principles mm -hmm. if not I i'm going to discard it but if it's if it's with the uh it's consistent with the word of god and what the biblical principles are then uh, hold on to it and so you, you have to be testing these, uh, these things. Hallelujah. So you, you need to be deepening your intimacy with the Lord. You I need mean, to be I engaging mean. with his scriptures. You, you need mm, to be, good. you need to be the glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, uh, fourth one is obedience. Obey mm. the promptings obey what he says to do be quick uh, to obey I'll be quick to obey be quick to obey um, and if you're willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land amen amen number um, four is that no, what five. five create a space for quiet time where you can be isolated and that you can be sensitive to what the spirit is saying so you know brother fred has two places tell him about your places i have a, a rock on a stream where there's a waterfall and i uh, go there and sit on it to hear what the what the spirit uh, says uh, i call it the lord's council room uh, and uh, he speaks to me there and I listen. I go there and I sit. Oh, you listen. hear the voice. And, and sometimes I uh, uh, present a question to him and, and I'm sitting there waiting on, on an answer. There's another rock I have on the same stream at a little different place. I call that the courts of heaven. So when I have an issue on the courts of heaven, I, I go sit on that rock and uh, I, I bring forth. Uh, my case before the Lord, I, I go there with the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ as my advocate and the Holy Spirit's guidance and where the blood cries out and uh, to a numerable uh, company of angels and saints and, mm -hmm. and uh, I ask questions because I need to hear the voice. See, I need uh, uh, a, a judgment from the courts of heaven or if I go to the Lord, to the Lord's council room, uh, I need to hear his voice. I need guidance. I need a direction from him. Okay, so now we're down to uh, number six. Number six. Hallelujah. You need some accountability in your life. You need to be connected with uh, mature Christians that you can bring what you're hearing uh, to and and. Make sure that you're hearing the right thing and you're getting the right direction. So don't don't be uh, just out there on your own. You need to be connected with the body of Christ. And, and so you need some uh, accountability and counsel. These are so practical ways to hear the voice. And you need to practice. You need to practice uh, hearing hearing the voice. 
And uh, the seventh is journal it. Uh, what has the Lord said? Take, make records and reflect on those, write, write those mm -hmm. things down mm -hmm. and, and reflect on what he's been uh, saying to you. So let's just go over these seven points and then I'm bringing this to a close. Uh, first of all, you need to deepen your intimacy, intimate relationship with the Lord through prayer and uh, worship. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. You need to engage with the scriptures through personal study and through a Bible study with others, for example. Um, you need to cultivate discernment. I talked about asking God, praying about it, mm -hmm. asking God, testing what you're hearing. Um, and, and that and that's important and be obedient. There's this the fourth. Mm -hmm. Be obedient uh, to what he's saying. And number five is create a space where you can have a quiet time where you can listen, where you don't put aside the distractions. And, and uh, number six, you, you need to be connected in the body of Christ with mature believers where where you can get counsel and you can have accountability. And, and then finally, you need to be keeping records. You need to be journaling. What is the Lord saying to you? And then reflecting on what the Lord is saying. So mm -hmm. I've tried to make this very practical. It's a different way of looking at uh, life and how to grow spiritually and how to mature. But I think it's a very, a uh, useful way, uh, things that we can get our teeth into that we can wrap our mind around and understand how to do these things. So thank you for being here tonight. And 